I have been discussing this concept for a couple of weeks now because I think that it's so critical, it's so vital. So before we begin, what is the form of English? Can anybody remind the class of the form of the language? What are the three main parts of a sentence? Just a basic review, a basic, yes, Jawida? Yes, hi, everybody. I think uh, subject, verb, and the complement. Yes, yes, subject, verb, object. The object yes. can be a complement. I'll discuss that later. The object can also be something else. So I always discuss this concept because it's so important. Subject, verb, object. Even my old TOEFL students would have trouble remembering this, and that was the source of many of their issues. So whether you're basic or advanced, this concept will always be really important in essentially everything you do. So today, we are studying phrasal verbs. And can anybody remind me, there are two parts in any phrasal verb. What are the two parts of a phrasal verb? Just a basic review. First, we have the verb. And um, Jawida, what comes after the verb? I think object. Well, Good try. In this case, it is a particle. A phrasal verb has two parts, a verb and a particle. A particle is a word like in, on, up, down, away, across, etc., etc. Yeah, it's it's like a preposition spring, but it's not technically a preposition not? because it's the same as a preposition, but in this context, we call it a particle because it's being used differently. And it's so critical to recognize the two parts of the phrasal verb. So you must recognize the particle. You must look at it or hear it and understand, oh, this is a particle. It goes with the verb, and all together it makes a phrasal verb. Don't forget, the particle changes the meaning of the verb, right? It changes the meaning of the verb completely. So, for example, the verb give, give. Right? I give, you receive. But give up is a completely different meaning. Even though this first word is the same, the particle completely changes the meaning. So these two verbs are not the same. Even though it has the same first verb, the particle changes the meaning, the particle works together with the verb. So a phrasal verb. Is a phrasal verb a subject, a verb, or an object? What part, what part is this in the form? A phrasal verb. Is this a subject, a verb, or an object? A verb. Yeah, great. Thank you, Mohammed. A phrasal verb is a verb, right? So it, it functions like a verb, even though there's this other particle word on the end. So, for example, I give up learning Spanish. For example, as you can see, the phrasal verb is functioning as a verb, but don't forget that some phrasal verbs are separable. That means you can separate 
the verb and the particle, or you don't need to separate them if you don't want to. So for example, I'm giving away free food. I'm giving it away. This phrasal verb, give away, is considered separable. So you can put an object in the middle of the phrasal verb, and this is very, very common. And in fact, this is why it is difficult. So thanks for listening to my, the first part of the lesson. Let's try to remember all of this because this is a very, very important concept for the lesson today. Okay, so here is the free material for the class. And today's warm up, today's warm up is actually a pronunciation warm up. I just want to practice uh, pronouncing these phrasal verbs like a native speaker. So the warm up is practice the pronunciation of these phrasal verbs, concentrating on linking the last syllable of the verb to the first syllable of the particle. So Mohammed, I'd like you to demonstrate for the class. So let's say give away, but let's say it like um, a native speaker would say it. So instead of saying give away, let's say give away. Can you say that? Give away. Give away. Give away. Yeah, it kind of sounds like this. Of course, this is not the spelling, but it sounds like give away. Spring, spring, can you say this? Give away. Give away. Give away. Not bad. Luciana, can you try? Give away. Give away. Give away. Give away. Nice, okay. Uh, Cassia, give away. Give away. Nice. Jawida? Give away. Good. Bavnik? Give away. Awesome. Tanu? Tanu Khan? Give away. Can you say that? Give it. That was a great warm up. Mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna practice pronunciation. Tanu, are you there? Can you say give in? Maybe not. Okay, so the reason we do that is just so you can practice the pronunciation. And again, when you're watching Netflix, um, if you hear this, you know, listen for this, you will hear it because phrasal verbs are extremely common for English speakers. So let's do, um, let's do another practice activity. And if you look here, we have these sentences and these sentences are scrambled. They are scrambled up. And as a class, I would like to unscramble the words to make a correct sentence, to make a sentence that is grammatically correct. So here are the, the words in the sentence. Let's try to make a sentence together. These sentences use the phrasal verb. So, Keep that in mind. If you think you know, you can just start saying it. What do you think the first word in the sentence could be? If, if the teacher. Oh, okay. Good. We'll, we'll start there. If a teacher. Okay. Okay. Good job, Spring. What is too strict? Okay, okay, good. 
if the teacher is too strict, how about someone else? Good job, Spring. Does anybody else want to try to complete this sentence? You can just say it. Students. Students. Will. Okay. Will give up too. Give up. Give, give up. up. Yeah. Okay. Mohammed, can you read this sentence to me? If the teacher is uh, if the teacher is too uh, strict, the students will give up. Sure. Uh, Spring, can you read this sentence to me? Yes. If the teacher is too strict, the students will give up. Good. Uh, one very very common pronunciation error. And almost all English students do this from Arabic to Africa to Asia to Brazil. It's, it's saying will instead of will or wow. ease instead of is. So excellent job, but let's concentrate on making that soft I sound. Will give, not will give will give but really good job okay luciana can you read this sentence to me please if the teacher is too strict the students will give up give up perfect that is absolutely fantastic great job Cassia, can you read this sentence to me please yeah is the teacher is too strict the students will give up Nice. Good. Jessica, can you please read the sentence to me? If the teacher is too strict, the students will give up. Nice. Yeah, and I like how I hear give up. The students will give up. So that's really what it sounds like. Jaweed, what is the origin of phrasal verbs? What part of the world do they come from? Oh, German? Yeah, the origin is Germanic. Actually, they're so old, they, they come from before Germany. The origin is Germanic. If you speak German, this is so easy to do. If you speak Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, Arabic, Asian languages, this is incredibly difficult because there is no equivalent in your language. So these come from German, whereas the other languages come from Latin. That's always why there is a Latin equivalent that means the same thing as the verb. Together. Um, number two, how can we make a correct sentence? There's probably, well, not probably, there is more than one way to do it, of course. Um, but who can help me uh, try to make another sentence here? I'll give you a moment, of course. If they add correct, what comes after? Give. Give, I mean more time. Oh, no, no. Uh, never mind. Give in time. No, no, no. Had given in time. Hmm. Is there another verb other than given that could fit in there? I mean, you're right, it should be uh, past participle, but I know the answer, so I'm just gonna help you. Is there another? Ask. Okay, Ask good. It. Okay, ask. ask it. Not, and, and remember, it's not asked, it's not ask it, it's asked. Asked. Yeah. yeah, good. Okay, excellent. So we have if. Plus, what is this right here? What is this formation? Past perfect. Okay, so perfect. exactly. If plus past perfect. So we know that this is a conditional sentence. So let's try to 
finish it now. If they had asked, we need an object here. Me. Okay, good. Okay. More times? I would. I would. More nice. Times. Yeah, I hear it. I would. Okay. Given. One more word before given. I would have given. Okay, yeah. Excellent. If they had asked me more times, I would have given in. I would have given in. Mohammed, can you say this sentence for me? I don't see any sentence. You're having Hello. trouble? Can you, hear, can you hear me? Yes, I have trouble with it. I don't know if with the laptop or with the connection. No worries. I just, I'll, I'll come I back. I just heard the, the, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Spring, can you please read this sentence to me? If they had asked me more times, I would have given in. Yes. If they had asked me more time, I would have. This is a great, good job, Cassia. So don't forget about contractions. When Americans speak, it's not I would have given in, right? The words become contracted, put together for faster, easier speaking. So would have becomes would of, sounds like, sounds like would of. Not, not spelled like that, sounds like that. Would of given in. So don't forget those contractions when we speak. Okay, who can help me? What is the, the meaning of give in? Give in, what is the meaning of it? Does anybody know? Stop resisting. Yeah, Cassia, good job. I'm glad that, thank you, yes. I'm glad you watched my video. To give in, it is similar to quit. It's similar to quit, but it's more like capitulate, to capitulate. It's more like you stop resisting something. So for example, imagine a mother with her children. A mother with her children. The children see chocolate in the store. The children want the chocolate. So they say, mom, mom, can we have chocolate? The mother says, no. And they keep asking, mommy, mommy, we want chocolate, please, mommy. And the mother says, no, 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 no. But the children keep asking, mom, mom, please give us chocolate. And the mother says, okay, fine. Here's some chocolate. I will buy it for you. That is giving in. That is when you stop resisting or when you capitulate to what somebody else. Church. The church is giving away free food. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And perfect. I mean, yes, that was absolutely perfect. Uh, spring, since you just said the sentence, correctly. I won't ask you to say it again, but uh, Luciana, can you say the sentence, please? The church is giving away free food. Nice. Uh, Cassia? The church is giving away free food. Nice. Really good. Jessica? The church is giving away free food. Nice, uh, Jawida. The church is giving away the food, free food. Good, Bavnik. The church is giving away free food. What is the meaning of this phrasal verb? Giving away, what's the meaning here? Distribute. Yeah. 
yeah, perfect spring. The Latin equivalent is distribute, right? Distribute. And that we could also say give out. Give out yeah. is basically the same as give away. They are very, very similar. There's another phrasal verb that we use, hand out. Maybe you can imagine how this phrasal verb was created. Hand out, give out, or distribute. Who can help me with this quick review? In this sentence, what is the subject? What is the subject in the sentence? The church. Church. The church is the subject. Good. What is the verb here? He's giving away. Giving away. I heard a couple different things. I heard giving away and I heard is giving away. What should it, what do you, what do we? He's giving away. He's giving away. Well, yeah, I, I think you should imagine these three words together. Present, present continuous, no? Yes, present continuous of a phrasal verb. It's important to understand that these three words work together. They function together. So even though they are three separate words, they are functioning together. What is the object of the sentence? Free food. Free food. Good. Free food is the object of the sentence. Now, let's go one step further. Okay, the object is free food. The object is free food. Let me change the color. But free food, it's actually the object, but it's a noun phrase. So let's take it one step further here. Free food is a noun phrase. So in this noun phrase, what is the noun? Food. 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 What is Food. free? Uh, adjective. Adjective, yeah, right. Adjective is free, but free food functions as the object of the sentence. So it's just very, very important that you can always understand this. If you won a million dollars, would you give any of it away? How much would you give away to your family? How much would you give away to your friends? Or would you not give anything away? Keep it all for yourself. Spring. Spring, if you won a million dollars, would you give any of it away? If I won a million dollars, I would give uh, any of this away. 